Hello everyone, welcome back to Positive Round Plays Enter the Gungeon. Uh, I don't remember who we were playing as last time, but we'll play as the pilot this time. Talk to our little crash landed friend here. Die in this horrible place over and over, or eventually succeed in reverse time. Oh, whoops. <laughs> oh boy, that legitimately just makes me. gives me a good chuckle every time. So, why am I playing as the pilot? Uh, variety. Why not? I still feel like the pilot, the pilot, the pirate? Man, I wish there was a pirate character. Dodge roll, please, get on that, will ya? Um, I still feel like the pilot has some advantages. It's just that if you don't get a good weapon on the first floor, um, your life is basically forfeit. Uh, so. We do have the third floor elevator open. Uh, basically how that works is you go to the third floor, you get picked one of three weapons, and I believe those weapons are the same every time until you kill the boss. However, I feel like that is not very conducive to a winning run. One weapon on the third floor is okay, but uh, not spectacular. So I'm still going to do regular runs for now. I hear the fourth floor. Um... Oh boy. The fourth floor one gives you two weapons, I think, and then you actually get a one for the fifth floor that gives you three weapons, which is kind of nuts. Two weapons and three weapons is actually pretty significant. Um, now, I know the first thing I need for the elevator... Oh dear. The fourth floor elevator is actually need four pieces of jump, which... Uh, it's definitely not going to happen on this run unless I totally botch everything because it basically assumes that you are destroying potentially every chest up to the fourth floor because you got to remember not every chest gives you junk either. So there's probably something I'll grind out off camera only because it's going to be super RNG heavy and it's probably going to result in a lot of failed runs. I don't know what they required beyond that. I'm assuming he requires the floor three mastery bullet, so I can certainly do that, or I can try to do that at least. It requires, you know, obviously getting a perfect fight against a level three boss. Also, as we get into summer, I'll probably make an update video at some point. Uh, I do want to do another one of those again, but if you hear any background noise, it might sound like an air conditioner. Uh, it is, and I apologize. As the weather gets warmer, my apartment tends to heat up like crazy. Uh, for the most part, that sound should be either covered up by game sounds in my voice or totally not picked up at all. But if you ever do hear a little, little oddity, I apologize. So what's my strategy here? Uh, don't die. What's my strategy beyond that? Really don't die. Uh, basically, I think what I'm going to try to do is try to get ahead on key economy, meaning um, I might take a risk on a chest on this floor unless I start getting key drops. Essentially, um, I feel like the best thing to do with the pilot is try to open a brown chest with the lockpick. And this. Oh, well, that's a nice key drop. Because um, as soon as you get one, you kind of you kind of start getting ahead of the curve. Now the issue is that, of course, the lockpick does have a cooldown. So if we don't find our rooms fast enough, we're not really going to get many opportunities here. I'm a little torn on whether or not you should use it to open uh, doors. I feel like if there's a door that leads to a chest, then it's good to use the lockpick, but otherwise it might be a little too risky. I also feel like buying a key on the first floor as the pilot is a good deal. The ammo belt is also pretty solid, even though he's already gotten, or he already gets a bonus to that. Um, yeah, let's go nuts. Let's buy a key. Remember, he gets a discount too, so. Oh, this means I'm also probably not going to use the lockpick on any chest on this floor, unless I get an amazing weapon out of the first chest I open. Fighting the boss with the rogue special. That's what it's called, right? Yeah, fighting a boss with the rogue special is painful, to say the least.
Boy, I have no idea where our treasure rooms are. Whoa, what is that? I've only seen one of those once before and it was on like the fourth floor. What is that exactly? Mutant shotgun kin. Huh. That's weird, they no longer try to return to the upper levels, but... Oh yeah, they're supposed to be in the obliette. obliette. That's, that's super weird. Right, here's one chest room. It's a brown chest. Um... Well, let's go look for the others. I should have opened that uh, secret room. In fact, I should go back and do that before I get too far away from here. Not secret room. Uh, Block passing, but I wish it was a secret room. There we go. Just to ensure I can get back here easily enough. If I find a good enough weapon in this other chest, I might risk the lockpick. Ooh. Uh, we might need a weapon to do this room. Uh. Yeah, let's let's try to get a weapon first. If you're not familiar, that's a uh, challenge room or like an arena room from the Binding of Isaac. You basically, just fight uh, multiple of every enemy on the floor in a gauntlet style. And if you win, as in you don't die, then you get an item. All right, blue chest will open. The Brick Breaker. <laughs> Wrong kind of mortar. Now, this is something I unlocked. I don't know what caused it to unlock. Legends tell of a mysterious alchemist who could turn bricks into coins, turtles, mushrooms, and a wide variety of other things. Interesting. Uh, 220. Oh my god, it fires turtle shells. That's amazing. I don't know if it's going to be a good boss weapon, but we should be able to uh, do this room with this. Uh, remain, yes. Do the turtle shells pierce also? Oh wow, they do. This is an amazing room clearing weapon. Although it's a little weird to aim. Doesn't have a, a huge clip either, but or magazine. I, I know I should always say magazine, not clip. Uh, I should also not get hit while talking about finer mechanics of guns that I don't understand. All right, this is one of the tougher rounds here. That's actually all. Oh man, that's a lot of ammo too. I'm a little distracted by the turtle shells. Also, those are straight up Mario turtle shells. All right, what do we get here? We get the snowball. I've actually never had this weapon before, even though I've seen it in shops a million times. Automatic. Looks well, like a nice weapon. Okay. Um, we've seen the boss room. Let's go over here. Is the snowball going to be good enough to fight a boss with? I don't know. Try to get a good gauge on how much the turtle. Wow, the turtle shells actually do a lot of damage. It actually seems like they do as much as the crossbows. I think that was the same number of hits. So the real question now is do I risk this chest and bank on being able to use these two weapons? I think yes. I immediately regret that decision. Um, but that's okay. I think it's I think it's worth saving a key, having two keys for the next floor. We did get a one junk, so that kind of incentivizes potentially doing that, even though I said I wouldn't. We only have got four chests left to do it with, though. Um, we'll try the snowball around the boss, too. I was afraid it was going to be the Gatling Gull. So we'll do this, because it's piercing. This is my least favorite arena to fight the Gatling Gull in. Well, no, I think my least favorite arena is actually the uh, one with the Full waterways. Wow, I am amazed I did not take damage there. 
Let's see how this does. This does okay damage, but it's very inaccurate. I think we're better off with the turtle shells. Although, this is slowing him. That might help quite a bit. I think the trick with the Gallon Gull is basically to stay as far away as possible at all times. Because he has a tendency to lead you far better than you can lead him. Alright, that. Not thrilled about that second blank usage, but I don't think I have much of a choice. I almost always get caught on that attack. Oh, god damn it. That's unfortunate. Uh, that's a good example. You kind of led me into a shot there while I was dodging. So we're not going to get the mastery on this. That's a bummer. Ugh. One hit. Wow, we got a ton of keys now. Um, so I would say, theoretically, we should probably not have to worry about using the lock very much. From this point forward, we should have plenty of keys to get through pretty much the entire game, assuming we get any other key drops. I mean, that, of course, you know, depends. If we get a whole bunch of uh, special rooms and things like that, that might change. Let's so definitely use this, because it's probably the worst room. This is like an angry Plinko board. Not a good room layout for this weapon, but definitely a good room clear. We also have the regular shotgun too. What's the range on that? Eh, decent. So that'll probably be my secondary room clearing weapon. I could use a good, accurate weapon. These are just rubber bullets, I think. Or are they? No, they're not just rubbers. Definitely benefits from having more enemies on screen, though. Taking out single enemies does kind of use up a lot of ammo, but better than better to use it than to not use it. Wow! Oh, did I actually walk into one of those bullets? Yes, I, I did. Oh yeah, I did again. Huh? I totally did not see that. Oh my! This is I do not sit in that room. That is causing me a ton of trouble there. Not sitting in that entryway, that is just a death trap. There we go. Now the benefit of having a lot of money too is, okay, let's not die super early here. Okay, or let's die super early. Uh, let's do another run. We'll start as the pile again. Man, that sucks, because that was a good weapon too, but... Um, I gotta get out of those entryways. Boy, dying on the... Uh, second floor is a little bit embarrassing at this point. How many credits do we get? We got one credit from the boss, too. Well, the downside is that that previous run had a lot of keys. And the keys are basically the most important resource. I'm trying to play Gungeon like I'm trying to play Dark Souls here. Back here, ghost. Whoa, whoa, okay. This is off to a fine start. I am really struggling, for whatever reason, getting hung up on corners. I don't know what it is. 
today that I'm having such an issue with here. I've seen that room layout before either. It's kind of interesting. Oddly enough, these guys are probably the easiest to fight with the Rogue Special only because their hitbox is enormous. Oh my god, you know what? Maybe I shouldn't have picked up that armor yet. That's actually kind of a, a strategy, thinking about like saving. I wonder if, will the rack take armor? I don't think so. But saving armor for the boss, so if you do get hit then, uh, I mean it still counts as taking damage, but at least you get the benefit of the blank. I'm also uh, leaving that previous recording in, even though it was awful, because uh, the brick gun's pretty cool. Can't move uh, non-flip tables. Oh, we have a book down here somewhere? Oh yeah, it's a blue book. There's the shop, but it's blocked. Probably still buy a key on this floor. 21, uh, 21 shell key. Pretty solid on the first floor. I feel like um, you should, unless you're trying to get one of these special, like the elevator things, I almost feel like buying a key on the first floor is almost a requirement. Unless you get ex exceptionally lucky. Since the prices aren't static like they are in something like the Binding of Isaac, um, you kind of, you lose a little bit by not buying something on the first floor. It's not a lot. It's only, I think, like a five shell difference, but, I mean, every little bit counts. Alright, what do we got here? Um, not a big fan of the Crestfaller. However, the sling is really good. In fact, I think I'm gonna buy it. So the sling, the way the sling works, also I love the uh, the outrageous, obviously a reference to, I believe it's Romeo and Juliet. Um, slings and arrows of outrageous fortune. I believe that's the, uh, Romeo's talking to Juliet up on the balcony. But, uh, Losing my train of thought here. Anyway, so the sling is um, has a unique mechanic where it does more damage to bosses than anything else. It actually, does a lot of damage to bosses. It can be a little difficult to use because it is a charge weapon. This can be a little tricky while you're dodging, but um, does a ton of damage. All right, brown chest, save for now. I only need six more shells to get a key. Also, so that's probably, well, I was going to say it's pretty likely, but now I'm not so sure. We'll probably definitely get enough after the boss, but, and with the sling, I don't really need to open chests before we fight the boss either. It wouldn't be a bad thing in case I get a good passive, but it's certainly doable without. Blue chest. You can also take the risk with the, uh, ooh, what are these? Gun boots, they go down well. I knew it was a down well reference. What do we got here? Improves dodge roll by adding bullets. Oh, that seems amazing. Oh, that is, that's awesome. I don't even know how effective that's gonna be, but that's just damn cool. Also, down well is a fantastic game. One I actually wish I, um, I'd spend more time with. In fact, I also think it's increased my speed dramatically. So what's my strategy here? I think I will probably try to lockpick the other chest and then buy a key. You know what? Why don't we just go do that? 
if it fails, I'm still in an okay shape with the sling. Um, and if it succeeds, then we're up a fair amount. Of course. The 50% chance, so I mean, flip a coin. Also, you can really see the, how bad the rogue special is accuracy-wise here. So we do get some junk. Alright, hopefully I can do this flawlessly, but if I can at least get out of here alive, I'll be relatively happy. So you can see that it does a lot of damage. I really hate dodging that bullet. Now I want to be careful because I don't want to accidentally hit the Chancellor with my gun boots. Kind of be unfortunate. Let's just clear here. I need one more. Nice. Okay, that's a flawless. Good, good, good. I don't know if you ever get anything from destroying the, uh, the boss corpses, but I usually do anyway. I guess we'll just refill the sling. Not really a great use, but... Uh, we also get the M1. And, uh... Yeah, I'll take care of you. So I do have enough to buy a key, and I definitely will. The M1, I'm assuming, is kind of a, uh, almost sniper type weapon. Yeah, most famous rifle in history. I have to say, I don't know much about guns, but that is a, uh... Pretty badass weapon. Something about those type of like single shot weapons, I don't know, it's there's something almost elegant about them that I always liked. I mean obviously playing games, I don't fire a gun in real life. Um, but I always thought they were kind of interesting. Alright, we got the Amulet of Pit Lord. How much is the uh, the key? 26. Yeah, so it's 5 difference. Prime Primer is not going to happen on this run, but it's definitely something I should consider um, in the future since we have started building the bullet. Surprised I didn't take damage during that roll there, actually. So this seems like a pretty solid weapon. It's one-shotting a lot of these enemies. We get a key, nice. I also don't know if I should... I mean, it, it's kind of a weird thing to think about, but if I don't manage to beat the game before I finish the bullet, am I going to be missing out on anything? That's an interesting question to make, or to, to pose. I feel like I should definitely try to beat the game at least once before I go for the secret ending. It's kind of like a Binding of Isaac type of thing. I know I've made that reference about a million times in this episode. Alright, there's two for the snipers. Oh, man. Uh-oh. Ah! I was gonna say, I bet it's gonna be one of these damn lead maidens. Oh wow, actually, did that pierce his armor? Or did I just catch him while he was closing up? I'm gonna have to go back and look at that. That was interesting. Alright, so we got the, uh, our strange little friend here. The sponge is actually not a bad item. Gives you a kind of an area of protection from status effects. Really useful against the Medusa boss. This is piercing. I was wondering about that. It's also is definitely putting into play what I've said previously that I feel like speed ups are insanely useful in this game. Uh, being able to move faster just feels like you have a huge advantage. Definitely... Oh dear. 
Ah, I mean, I thought I'd be able to roll by that and uh, not hit fast enough, basically. And there goes my armor, unfortunately. All right, here's our first chest. Boy, I'm so tempted to lockpick it with what we have for an arsenal right now. We'll come back to it. It seems like almost an unnecessary risk, but at the same time, the more keys you build up, the more you can afford to spend them later on if you get the opportunity. I like it's four shots to kill that guy. These enemies are quite a pain. I'm actually surprised how many shots these guys can take. Watch out for the spikes. It actually worked out really well. I tried to hit the barrel with my gun boots and it worked. It's also fires really fast. Where's that ghost? Some extra money. I don't know. I, mean, I could continue the key train, but at some point I need to start either saving money for better shops or uh, I could buy the sponge too. It wouldn't be a terrible idea. We haven't found any NPCs or anything yet this round either, which is unfortunate. into that one. So we must have our other treasure room and the connector here coming up. Two more, right? Yeah. Oh, I am actually out of ammo for this. Did not realize. I should use... Well, that lens definitely lends some weight to needing a better weapon, or needing another weapon, rather. Certainly don't want to use the sling against these rooms. This take way too long to kill these enemies. I don't know how much damage it does to a normal enemy, but I know it's not a lot. All right, this is our other treasure room. Nice, magic chest. Not what I was hoping for. Uh, blank's companion ring. I believe every time we use an active item, it uses a blank effect, which right now does basically nothing for me. Uh, so that being said, now I have to open this chest with a key. The flash ray I'm not super thrilled about, but at least it is a weapon I could use to clear rooms. And I could buy ammo. Do I want to buy ammo or do I want to buy a key? That's actually an interesting choice. We should get some money from the boss, right? Buy a key. Now, I don't know about my dodging skills with the sling versus these upper bosses, but we'll try. All right, this is good because I actually need to fight this guy two more times. The issue I'm going to have here is that I'm not going to have a way to get rid of his missiles. At least not easily. Ah, that's... Never go up there. Yeah, this is gonna get... Well, I mean, I've already gotten hit at this point, so... Although the gun boots actually took out the missiles just fine. I've already gotten hit, so if I get hit again, it's not a huge deal. But I don't want to die here. Yeah, sling is not a good weapon for fighting this guy, that's for sure. We got him, though. Took more damage than I wanted, naturally, but... We didn't get ammo. We 
didn't get a lot of money from that either. Hmm, that is not a good state to be in. Uh, the beehive, I believe, summons bees if we take damage. Yeah. So this has suddenly gone from an A tier run kind of to a, uh, a B or C tier. I am curious though, is the... Is the TV here, or does it only appear on the second floor? I think it only appears on the second floor. I should get in the habit of picking that up with the, uh, the pilot. Prepare your eyeballs, because uh, it's gonna get bright around here. Really, uh, this is very visually impressive, but it's probably one of my least favorite weapons because of how bright it is. My eyes tend to be very sensitive to that sort of thing. Ah, okay. <laughs> Thank you, game, for listening to me. Right. As I always say, one of my least favorite rooms. The uh, the regular bullet cannon actually have enough health to survive uh, an M1 shot now, which is unfortunate. So we're gonna run through this ammo pretty quickly. There's the bees at work from getting hit. Pretty decent. Where are... Oh, I was gonna say, where the hell are our enemies here? It's kind of interesting, those, uh, the gun jurors, it's interesting how difficult they can be to dodge because they they fire like a player, you know, they track where you're going to be rather than where you are, which is very, very contrary to almost everything in gaming. Makes for an enemy that's still... Ah, oh, I took a ton of damage. Did I take a whole heart of damage at some point there? Um, it's a, a mechanic that is still predictable, so it's fair, but it's kind of sketchy. Okay, we have a heart purse. Elder Blank is so good. Oh boy. I don't think I can afford to. I would have to go through another room. And then even then, I don't think I can afford to buy the Elder Blank. I think I would have to buy the Heart Purse instead. The question is, can I afford to go through another room without dying? is a really bad idea. This isn't the worst room to get, though. Not a great use of a blank, but basically couldn't afford to die in that room. So let's go buy the health upgrade. I would love to get the Elder Blank, but I need some form of- there's no health on the floor, right? No, I need some form of health, or, uh, I'm going to die. If I can get the Elder Blank after this, that would be great. Um, especially because it'll trigger a double Blank effect because of my little buddy here. And Blanks do cause a little bit of damage, so... This room is a nightmare. Oh, we cleared it, okay. But there was still another enemy there. Okay, so far so good. Now we got one of these jokers. Such a weird enemy. Survived another room. I only have one key, also. Running a little low on ammo. I 
have to use the flash right here, I think. Oh, oh. Oh my god. How have I not taken damage on this round? Alright, uh, I guess we'll fill up the M1 once again. Go back to using this full time. It certainly stands for uh, another weapon, though. This is doing well, but it's gonna start becoming more and more difficult to clear rooms with. Oh, that's definitely not the gun I wanna use. Free treasure chest and another ammo. Uh, I guess I'll just refill this again. <sighs> Table tech sight is great, but not what I need right now. I really need health. I really need guns. Lots of guns. Oh wow, that guy just about blew himself up. Did he knock one section off of him? Yeah, he did. I can sneak around and flip a table here. There we go. Oh wow, the explosion actually killed the rest of those guys. Have enough money for the Elder Blank. Not a mimic. Yeah, I gotta open it. What is this? Rubidine Prototype. I've had this before, but I can't remember what it is. Oh, Ricochet Blaster. It's okay. Um, might be good for clearing rooms. I still don't really have, I mean, I guess the M1 is a good boss weapon too. But I don't want to use the sling. Yeah, I guess we'll, we'll take the blank. Starting to get to sketchy levels of curse, but see how it goes. Is this better than the M1 for clearing rooms? That is a fine question. Depends on oh, it's off the window. Uh, if anybody knows a way to force mouse lock to window either in this game or in general, I would be greatly appreciative because that is continuing to be a little bit of an issue. I'm actually less concerned about it for me and more concerned about it for you guys. Wow, we actually have not had a good time opening any of these. Is that, um, that's our second junk. Almost tempted to destroy the chest on the next floor and try to um, try to get that. All right, boss time. Boss time, sling time. What do we got here? Try not. Oh goody. Not as insane as it used to be, but still no pushover. Especially if I can't aim, I cannot believe, well, I did get hit there. I also only have one health left, so it's gonna be blank central here, basically. The trick is using a blank, not dying.
Kind of just throwing rocks off into the nether. Not being entirely sure. There's also a, a jam enemy. Ah, oh, shoot. <laughs> oh, I got distracted by that. I guess he's, he spawned a jammed enemy in there. I just... Totally caught me off guard. I didn't realize it. I guess that's what curse adds for a problem. Um, well, not whoops, not the uh, the greatest runs, but not too bad. Eventually, I realized it had to be true. Right, I figured I'd just go talk to him again. Let's buy an item at least to cap off this episode. What do we got here? Bug boots, plunger, fossilized gun. Does this guy have a six and a three by any chance? I know he has a three. Ration, airstrike. Yeah, let's buy a cluster mine and airstrike. I think those are both going to be active items, which I'm not super thrilled about, but um, that's okay. Is there a way, can we tell before we actually uh, pick them up whether they're active or not? No, I guess I'm also there's a whole bunch of stuff that I've never actually uh, picked up or have never seen rather Live ammo Ring of triggers gun night a whole bunch of stuff Anyway, uh, that will do it for now Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it despite me not playing super well today uh, subscribe if you'd like to see more, and I will see you soon.